me lean in because everybody doesn't know this and don't know if I want to tell everybody, but I feel extremely ill-equipped to be talking to you right now. there and welcome back I am so very pleased that you've decided to spend some time with me as I talk about our Lord and Savior I appreciate it and I understand but this is no small thing. It's an investment of your time and your energy. And I appreciate it. So for those of you who are not familiar with me, I'm Marilyn. And what I seek to do on this channel is to bring faith-based content that helps us to integrate our faith into each space that we show up in in our life experience. That's the way I was taught. That's what I believe true discipleship is. I don't believe that our faith should be relegated to Sunday mornings or if you grew up in church like I did it was not just Sunday morning it was all day Sunday and then it was Wednesday night uh, prayer meeting and it was also Thursday night uh, choir rehearsal and um, a few more days during the week for other activities, but it was always about what happened within those church walls. As I grew in my faith and was mentored by seasoned women of God, I found out that what I learned within those four walls that had the steeple on the top needed to become a part of who I was so that I could take it with me on the job and into my relationships and my rearing of my children and into the grocery stores and down those aisles and at the checkout when I'm sitting in traffic, you know, all of that needed to be a part of who I was in every space I showed up in. So that's what I intend to do with this format, this platform, and this content. If it sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, stick around and tell others. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so. I want to talk a little bit, and it, please, won't be very long, but I want to talk a little bit about the Beautitudes. You're like, yeah, that sounds familiar. I've heard people talk about Beautitudes before. Where is that in the Bible? Let me think. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Uh, but we can find the Beatitudes in the Gospel of uh, St. Matthew. Uh, fifth chapter, third through the tenth verse. And this all came about, you know, um, uh, Jesus saw the crowd gathering. And so a need was identified. Are you able to identify any needs in your life? 
or in the lives of those close to you? If you've seen some of my other posts, you know that I just recently um, was healed, thank God, um, after a very trying illness. And unfortunately, I've had family members and close friends who have been dealing with health crisis too. It's scary stuff. Not knowing what's going on or, or what you can do about it. It's a lot. But Jesus identified a need as he saw the crowd gathering, just as he identifies a need within us. When we're able, though, to identify those needs within us and know that the source of all truth, the source of all fulfillment and satisfaction lies in Christ Jesus. And if we make our way to him, It's just amazing what can happen. I'm going to pray before I really get into talking about the beatitudes. Is that okay? Thanks. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for this space. And I thank you for allowing me to have this conversation with individuals who love you. I just want to know how to do this thing called life better. Thank you for giving us everything we need for life and godliness. Thank you for saying that you would not withhold any good thing from us. And that you love us so much you came so that we could have life and that more abundantly. Thank you, God, and bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautitudes. All right, let's get to it. The Beautitudes are teaching about how to be full of blessing or full of God, fully and wholly satisfied with God, connected to God, and having God live in you and me. Simply put, Jesus is saying this is how to have the good life. The best life. The life intended for you and me. So, he began the Sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes. Now, this was the very first sermon recorded for our Lord and Savior. There are eight Beatitudes that are identified. He says, blessed are they who are poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Let's stop and talk about those two. Poor in spirit. When we hear that, what images do we picture? Destitution, lack.
and inability an abnormality maybe maybe even depression but he said blessed are they who are poor in spirit when you feel there's nothing in here. We've got nothing left to give. In society's view, that would put us at a disadvantage. But God says, When you come to the end of yourself, that's when I'm able to come in. That's when you're in a place where it's no longer what you're able to do with your own personal resources, your intellect or the money you have in the bank or your connections, but it's about me operating on the inside of you to accomplish that that I purposed when I created you. I feel, let me lean in because everybody doesn't know this and don't know if I want to tell everybody, but I feel extremely ill-equipped to be talking to you right now. And if it were up to me, I would be somewhere behind the curtain assisting someone else in this space. When we come to the end of ourselves, that's when God can come in and show himself mightily through us and on our behalf. Blessed are they who are meek. Meekness is not equivalent to weakness. Meekness is a posture of strength. Meekness is a position of submission to our almighty creator. It is an acknowledgement that you are in control, God. You know all things, and all things belong to you. Let me step back. Let me check myself. And let me position myself in the best way possible to excel in every area you have intended for me. Blessed are they who are meek, for they shall, oh my God, they shall possess the land. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. None of us can escape mourning. 
I've heard it expressed this way that grief and loss and mourning you know, that that's the price that we pay for love blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled not many of us have really experienced real hunger and thirst not in America at least but when we really hunger and thirst for God's righteousness not just around us but within us he says when you have that posture I'll fill you. He fills us to overflowing so that we give from the overflow and not trying to scrape from the bottom of the barrel. There's a difference. It's a whole different feel to it. As the young people say, it's a whole vibe. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Compassion is not overrated, and it's not archaic. Blessed are they who are clean of heart, for they shall see God. How do we clean our hearts? We ask God to search us and to help us to see ourselves for real. And we, we take that ugliness to God and we ask for his forgiveness and we accept that forgiveness and we forgive ourselves. I don't know about you. I wanna see him. I wanna see him now, here on this earth, as I live and breathe, blessed are the peacemakers. God says they're blessed because they will be called the children of God. He is not the author of confusion. Chaos is not a fruit of the Spirit. Let's seek to be peaceable with all. All men, women, and children around us. Mm, this last one. Some of us may have a little trouble with it. Well, I'll just speak for myself. Pain is not something mm, that I call a friend. I don't like, I don't like a toothache. I don't like pain. But God says, blessed are they who suffer persecution for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There are some things we have to just stand up. Oh, as the old folks would say, would say stand flat-footed and face. And when we know that we're not standing alone, that God is truly with us. We, we get a different, uh, we get a different posture, don't we? That hand might go on the hip, but we might lean back a little bit with it. Yeah, I'm not here by myself. 
God is with me. These beautitudes, these are fundamentals in the life of Christians. These beautitudes require authentic Christian attitudes. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Christ-like attitudes and subsequent behaviors. When we integrate these characteristics, these godly characteristics into our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, we show up differently because we are equipped mightily. Wow, that's a lot. It's a lot. But we've got God to help us with it. I thank God that we've been able to, to talk, even if it's just been briefly, about him and his nature and who he is to us and who we are in him he has set each of us up for success let's walk in the knowledge in the favor of God. Thanks so much for your time, for your energy, for your love and support. And until next time, keep seeking God and allowing Him to truly satisfy your soul. Bye now.